Film Zone 3.0 There's a movie slab inside of you Well, I'm not a hill review Any movie you go give to Here comes the new Film Zone 3.0 Alrighty then Hey guys, been a long time Sorry about that But it's almost Halloween time And you know what that means it means fucking terrible horror movies for that I have to talk to. Because some for some reason, Halloween's now bigger than Christmas. Because all these fucking loser horror nerds and stuff. And I get a lot of requests. I usually don't do them because I don't have time. I can't do requests and reviews for stuff that people want me to because I'm too busy watching movies. But I made an exception this year because what the hell. You know, someone wanted me to review Pet Cemetery. And I'm, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Probably the biggest. No one's a bigger Stephen King fan than me. But someone's got to say it. Pet Cemetery is one of the most overrated horror movies I've ever seen. It is. It's just bad. And everyone's afraid to tell the truth. But that's what you come here for is to hear the truth because you don't know the truth. You don't know nothing because no one knows anything until I tell them what to think. Pet Cemetery is this horrible movie. And I, I kind of forgot how bad it was until I started revisiting all these really overrated Stephen King movies. Especially like I watched Shawshank Redemption recently. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Everyone says it's the greatest movie ever made. It's a bunch of homos in a prison. I don't even know how it's Stephen King. Nothing comes to life. There's nothing coming to life or killing people or whatever. It's just a bunch of fruitcakes in a prison crying about how they're innocent. Why the fuck would anyone want to watch that? My life is a prison. Every 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 one of us are prisoners in our own little Shawshank prison. And I don't film it, but I sit around crying all the time about how fat and much of a fucking loser I am. I don't need people telling me that. I don't need to see a movie with that either. Even though I might be gay, I don't know. I'm not saying that them queers in the prison movie, that's a bad thing. No, that's probably fun. You know, they're probably, it's better than nothing. My grandpa used to say, because he was in the military and they had to fuck each other sometimes. There's no women. What are you supposed to do? It's like food and stuff, too. Sometimes they don't got that good food stuff around. My mom's not cooking what I like. So sometimes you got to suck it up and, you know, eat a plate of shit. That's what Shawshank Redemption is, a plate of shit. That's what Pet Cemetery is. It's a plate of shit, especially compared to all the other scary Stephen King stuff. I like real horror movies. Pet Cemetery is not a real horror movie. That's not what I like. I like scary stuff. I like dolls that kill people, monsters, vampires, chupacabras, midgets leprechaun stuff like that not whatever the fuck this movie's supposed to be it's horrible so i went to the doctor recently you know i'm getting to it pet cemetery i'm actually going to talk about this piece of shit movie my doctor kind of scared me and said i got a weight problem all the stuff i already know i'm big bone big jeans not not my fault i was born this way he's telling me i gotta stop drinking the diet cokes i gotta I, sometimes i have a cigarette he said you can't smoke cigarettes anymore cheese puffs all the stuff and i was like look we need another option okay a plan b because this, this shit's not working he came up with this plan for small food this doctor's a genius he came up with the small food idea right and i like a lot of small foods so it already's probably going to work for me you know like i'm eating a lot of the vienna sausages right out of the can small food small food small portions you know and he's got me drinking these baby diet cokes you can't tell but this thing's tiny right little cans of cheese balls this is a little baby can with a little cheese balls in it Smaller foods mean smaller portions, mean smaller heart attacks, you know, smaller, smaller chances of dying and stuff. So this is my baby steps to getting back on track on my Star Wars diet. But it's Halloween. So let's tell the doctors, like, Halloween time I go hard. There's nothing we can do about that. I'm probably going to gain at least 20 pounds of candy alone. But after that, it'll be a couple weeks before Thanksgiving. I'm going to do some dieting for real. We try to lose some weight before Thanksgiving because when Thanksgiving hits, I gain 30 pounds every year just from Thanksgiving alone. And then after that, I'll do a little more dieting, right? I'm going to eat small foods again, try to lose some of that Thanksgiving weight before Christmas gets here because that's when I go absolutely ape shit. I, eat, I, I celebrate Christmas for the whole month and eat that Christmas food all month. I probably gain 40, 50 pounds at Christmas time. So it's going to be hard. So I can't really start till Christmas until right after Christmas. And then, you know, we do a crazy New Year celebration. My, my mom, this is the one time where I allow her to spend my movie money from her social security check on party food for the family and stuff. So New Year's Eve, we go crazy. We get rotel dip, Swedish meatballs, stuffed jalapenos. We got everything, finger sandwiches. We go crazy. So I'm probably gonna gain at least 30 pounds there too. So I can't really start for real with my baby food, little food diet thing till after New Year's. I'll make you guys proud. What are we talking about? Pet Cemetery? Oh my god.
So yeah, Halloween is right around the corner. And I'm not talking about the piece of shit Michael Myers thing. Because fuck that, I already made a video on that. Don't go see it. We're talking about Pet Cemetery Stephen King horror thing. And I just want to quickly break down why it is one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen. Stephen King Pet Cemetery, And it kind of makes me sick thinking about it. Let's talk about this Pet Cemetery movie for real. Let's start with some of the characters. Let's start with all the characters. Okay, you got Casper, the traumatic head injury ghost, who's completely worthless. You got Dr. Boring. You got Foghorn Leghorn, Judd, worthless. You got hot-ass bitch mom from those Star Trek shows. Kind of good when she's smoking hot and everything, especially at the end. And then you got Princess Zelda, one of them's sister or whatever. The retarder lives in the attic. Let's start with Princess Zelda, right? Because people think that she's actually scary because she's a little deformed. Let me just just break the ice, break the news to you people who've never been outside of your bubbles wherever you're living. I live in Mississippi. I have a born and raised here my whole life. These colors don't run sort of thing. Everyone looks like Zelda here. They all look like that. Are you kidding me? So the fact that people think that this demented retard with the warp back, I don't know why people think she's scary. These are just my neighbors. These are the people I grew up with. They're all just a bunch of in inbreeding fucking retarded rednecks that just fuck their sisters and stuff and eat grits and you know floppy tits and stuff. I don't I don't know what the big deal is with the Zelda thing. And just in general, before we go break down Zelda a little bit more, you know, I just want to say about this movie, just in general, there's no tits, there's no ass, there's no sex, there's nothing. It's, this is a nothing burger of fucking ghosts walking people around and burying and shit. There's, there's nothing happens in this movie. It's fucking stupid. It's just a bunch of trucks zooming up and down a house. I don't know why anyone would watch this. I don't know why it's rated R. The best thing that came out of Pet Cemetery is Pet Cemetery 2. And people hate shit on that movie. Only one Pet Cemetery has a smoking ass mom with her tits out and a dog head riding some dude. So you're all wrong about that. At least Pet Cemetery 2 has that. So yeah, Pet Cemetery is supposed to be the classic monkey feet tale. You know, the, the monkey feet making a wish sort of thing that everyone talks about so great. It's not great. I hate that. I like monsters. I like midgets. I like chupacabras and stuff. So we get it. Yeah, this is a monkey paw tail thing. It's supposed to be some biblical thing. Like you're supposed to learn a lesson or something from that. I don't learn nothing from this movie because I don't make mistakes. You know, the one time I made a mistake, I told people, you know, to watch Halloween Kills or whatever. But that that's the only time in my life. And the last time you'll ever hear those words coming from my mouth. I don't make mistakes. I like these fucking idiots in this movie. And I don't want to keep going on and on about Zelda, all right? Because this is it's not important. None of this stuff's important. But everyone looks like Zelda here in Mississippi. And just a, just a quick little side note story. We had this kid down the street. I think he was on the spectrum or something. His name is Mikey. He was our friend. But we were like seven or eight years old. And he was probably close to 20. But he looked our age. He's got one of those age-defying things. You know, one of those conditions. I don't know what it's called. Because my mom didn't know how old he was. That's why she let us hang out with him but he literally had a job like for real he worked at this fast food hamburger place that we absolutely loved it was called checkers it's still we still have it it's one of the best ever nobody can beat checkers fries big buford's all this amazing food but he worked there when we were little kids and so we got the hookup and all that stuff long story short this kid mikey down the street his he had a sister who looked like we're way worse than zelda and his this is back in the 80s his family literally kept her chained in the garage so she wouldn't hurt people because she not only did she have the hunchback and the deformities and all that stuff but she had this crazy retard strength that she could literally crush her head like a grape if she wanted to and she had these big deformed razor sharp teeth and all kinds of bones and stuff like poking or poking from her body that could really hurt people and people get upset when i tell this story or things like this but this was this was of the time and things were different in the 80s. You know, gays couldn't vote. Blacks were still basically slaves. I mean, things were different in the 1980s. Like, Taco Bell was still good. It's of the history moment thing back then. And uh, I forget her name because they... She wasn't really a person. She was just this, like, mongoloid chained up to the wall. She was way uglier and scarier than Zelda. Now we live in this PC woke culture thing that all these fat losers that look like me online, all they talk about is how woke everything is and how they're anti-cancel culture and all this. I don't care about any of that because all I see is a bunch of fat, neckbeard crybabies bitching about not getting laid and stuff. You know what I mean? If you want to get that poonanny, like my uncle and my grandpa was talking about. You gotta lose your tits, okay? Stop complaining. Chicks don't like that when you bitch about other stuff that doesn't matter. You gotta lose these tits. You gotta get that poonanny. The only way you're gonna do that is to stop complaining and stuff about all this woke stuff. 
Who cares? I don't even know what any of that means. But I just look like these people, so I get lumped in with them. And because of all this woke stuff, all this woke stuff with these fat losers complaining and stuff, now and they make a big deal out of when you cha chain your retard to the garage and you know, you're just trying to help her, not hurt herself or other people. So you can't really get away with talking about stuff like this anymore. But I can because I'm move slob and I say whatever I want. I mean, I don't care. I don't monetize videos and beg for money and stuff. So Mikey, his sister was chained in the in the garage. And this is the positive thing. This is what I'm trying to get to. One positive thing that's way better than this piece of shit Pet Cemetery movie is that when we were kids and we're having a bad day, let's say we got a bad grade on a test or we lied to our parents or we did something wrong, I beat up my sister. When I was having a bad day, we could always go to Mikey's and he would charge me and my brothers a quarter. That's it, a quarter, which we would find in the couch cushions and scrape them up, and run over there with a whole handful of them. He charged us a quarter each to go through his garbage and pick out all the rotten fruit or vegetables or whatever was in there that his mom threw away. We'd get a big handful for a quarter and we would just go in the garage and just pelt the living shit out of this thing because it's you know technically it's a sister but it's really a thing it's basically john carpenter's thing chained to a wall i don't think things like that have souls but they did the right thing today she'd be in some kind of mental institution where she get to watch tv and stuff i guess that's better but back then the positive thing was me and my brothers would get rotten fruit especially tomatoes those are the best because it looks like gore like we're tom savini's in a dawn of the dead movie thing and we would just pummel the shit out of this chick chained to the wall with rotten fruit and vegetables and anything we had and all of that fun from doing that let out the stress stuff. All kids and stuff in America struggle with stress. It's a real thing. It's a stressful life. Having to get up every day like little slave boys to go to school to learn stuff you don't care about and having to interact with people you hate. Very stressful. You know, you can't always get what you want, unlike now. Like when I was a kid, I didn't always get what I wanted, even though I pretty much did, but I still didn't. 100% of the time. Now I get everything. I don't work. I live with my mom. She gives me everything I say or I threaten to kill myself or I threaten to kill her. That's how you get stuff. But you didn't know that. I didn't know that when I was a kid. Things were a lot harder. It was tougher. It's like a Nirvana song. That's super depressing to be a kid because you can't get everything because you don't have money yet or you haven't figured out how to threaten your parents into giving you everything you want. So all the stress stuff, I'm, I'm actually building to a point, believe it or not. All the stress stress stuff, people had ways of taking it out. And I don't condone it now because it's one of those things I'm not going to like, I'm not going to apologize for something I did when I was a kid. Yeah, it was wrong, but that's with the mindset of the now. The mindset of the then was right. So to me, the only thing that matters is what's right. And what's right is the past and that mindset of the then and not the now. You understand? So back then we had all the stress and stuff and we would just let it out by beating the shit out of this retard that was chained to the wall in their garage. We were paying her for the time and stuff. But nowadays, I, I really do believe this. Kids don't have an outlet to let out that stress stuff. When they can't get what they want, they don't have stuff, retards to beat up on and things like that. They don't have this sort of thing like we did. They are, they all they have is distractions. You know what I mean? Like imagine when I was a kid, if I didn't have a way to, to release all this stress stuff, I would probably have shot up a school or something like they do now. That's what my point is. They don't have those releases like we did back then because everything's off limits. We expect our little kids to be grownups and they don't have a way to release that stress. Okay, all they do is sit around watching TikTok videos and not getting stuff that they want because it's too expensive. And what do you think's gonna happen? Kids don't let up stress, it just builds and builds and builds, and then they get guns and they, they go on rampages. That's just a fact. So people, I don't like to get political on this channel, but people are always talking about school shootings, why is it happening, why is always, this thing didn't happen in my day. There were guns, there was stress, all these things, all the elements existed, but the kids didn't connect all the dots and start killing everybody because they, they had ways of letting the stress out. That's just facts. That's that's just facts. And that all ties into this horrible, horrible Pet Cemetery movie. So the whole time I'm watching this, I know this is kind of obvious, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I think this whole thing could have been avoided if the rich doctor... Dr. Boring, whatever his name is, when he bought his house, the first thing he should have done was build a fence. That's the thing missing. You see, I live out here in the country in Mississippi, and all the big houses that, or the houses that have big properties on truck lines, on highways where killer trucks are, they have fences because it's just wood. A couple pieces of wood you nail together. That's it. And this doctor, dude, has all this money and a family and beautiful family and all this stuff, and he, he moves next to a murder street, a, a murder truck street, and doesn't 
install a fence, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Here's my version of Pet Cemetery. okay? I, I, I re-edited this myself because my fucking fat kid down the street, Charles Jacobs, is still sad about his brother dying. And he hasn't been working for me, so I had to do this myself. This took like, this took like 10 hours to edit. But I'm going to show you, this is my version of Pet Cemetery, how, how it should have gone. Ready? Enjoy. That's a nice fence, dog. That would have been a, such a better movie because it would have been 60 seconds long and I wouldn't have to sit through this fucking drudge of nonsense. Build a fence. Very simple. Speaking of small foods, it's it's hurricane season now here in Biloxi and stuff. So my mom and stuff always stocks up on them awesome hurricane foods. I'm talking Vienna sausages, potted meat. People probably don't know what this is. Potted meats, all kinds of stuff. Raviolis in the cans, survival stuff. Because electricity might go out for like an hour and we could starve to death for real. So I've been... Also start, my doctor got me on small foods diet. A pot of meat comes in this tiny little can and it's full of nutrients and stuff. So I've been hitting that and it's, if you, here's a little party trick I'll show you guys. Get your cheese puff. It doesn't work with the cheese balls. It kind of makes a mess. You need a, you need a little, this is about the size of my dick. You need a dick cheese puff. You take it. It's a great dip. Potted meat in the can. You don't have to do anything. I would add a little mayonnaise to this to make it more fancy, but I didn't think about that. So take your pot of meat, you put it on the cheese puff and... Mm. the flavor of this stuff you know rich people with their they eat caviar and stuff like fish eggs they don't know what they're missing because that shit's really expensive and it's fucking disgusting potted meat this can costs a quarter it's 10 times better than any fucking rich assholes caviar i swear to god this is fucking brilliant this is so satisfying and it fulfills my needs of a small food diet thing you don't even need a cheese puff. Just eat it right out of the fucking can. I was talking to you guys about Pet Cemetery. Can I ask you guys, why is this movie called Pet Cemetery? by the way? Because it literally has nothing to do with Pet Cemeteries. For real. If you really think about it, I don't know why it's called Pet Cemetery. It should be called Racist Indian Burial Ground. Because nothing's buried at the Pet Cemetery, and it has nothing to do with the movie. It's all these fucking losers that hate black people because of their grandpas did. I don't see color, so I don't accept racism. And I don't like using the word either, except for very rare instances like this, because I don't know any other way of sugarcoating it. Basically, what this movie is saying, if you bury anything, your pet, your wife, a dildo, if you bury it in a white person's cemetery, your dildo goes to heaven. It's all happy. But if you bury your dildo in a racist Indian burial ground, then it comes back and you, it rips your fucking throat out. So what's the word for that? It's not racism. I don't know what it is. Okay, but this movie fucking sucks and has nothing to do with Pet Cemetery. You get buried in the fucking Indian burial ground that's twenty miles away that they have to hike to all day just to bury some fucking cat, which are a dime a dozen. Look, people get all offended when I talk about family members dying or pets and stuff. It's all the same thing. Just get another one. You know what I mean? Your your cat dies, go buy another one. Don't fucking hike up a mountain with some fucking pedophile old looking crusty ass foghorn leghorn to go bear to bring it back from the dead why does that make any sense just get another one the one thing i did learn from all this bible stuff when i used to go to bible camp things it's all my aunt taught me even if you don't believe in god i don't really but i have enough sense to know god didn't give us dicks and cunts and stuff to not fucking make more kids and stuff and just to sit around and cry about the ones that die. You understand? We got dicks and cunts and things to have more babies in case they die. Because that's life and 
evolution and stuff. So anytime movies where the kids die and they're sitting around crying, just have another one. I know people in my own neighborhood, they have 30 kids. For real. All these redneck fucking white trash people do is fuck. It's not a big deal. Just stick it in, pop out another one. I don't want to watch movies crying about some dead kid or especially cats. Get the fuck out of here with that. Your cat gets run over. You know how many fucking pets I've lost? I've lost so many fucking cats and dogs when I was a kid. We had this Boston Terrier and my dad literally killed it. He stomped it to death while we were sleeping. He didn't tell us he was going to do it. Our little Boston Terrier dog ate his TV dinner. My mom left him a TV dinner to have when he got home from work. And the dog jumped up on the counter and ate it. My dad curb stomped the fucking dog in the backyard and then threw it over the ditch. We had to see that because we cut across the ditch to go play with our friends. And our dog was just flattened like a pancake with its guts hanging out. It's floating in the ditch. He didn't even tell us. When I first got my driver's license, I was like 18 or 19. And our cat, Garfield, was sleeping under the tire well. I didn't know he was there. And I backed up the car and just, it was horrible. His head exploded like it rolled over his it rolled over his jaw part and his eyes and brain exploded out of his head all over my mom's car because I was driving my dad's car and I had to not not only hearing that crunch and that pop and then the eyeballs and brains flying across the yard having to see that smell it but knowing my cat was dead and I had to walk over there and clean that shit up because my dad was going to beat the living shit out of me with a switch if I didn't clean it off my mom's car because he didn't want her to see that when I was a little bit older um. I had three puppies, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and I accidentally killed them doing a skateboard trick, which you've heard that's in an old episode stuff. I used to be a professional skateboarder when I was younger, but you don't see me crying about it. I'm not crying right now. I've never cried about it. You know why? Because they're replaceable. They're just like anything else. You know what I mean? My whole fucking house burned down. I lost everything. You don't see me crying about it. You know why? Because I get more shit. That's what we do. That's what we're alive for. That's what makes us American. Something dies, have another one. You lose something in a fire, get some more, spend some more money. That's the only thing that'll ever fill this void in your heart. No matter what your thing is, you want to fill that void, spend money, and shut the fuck up about it. I'm just going to be honest with you, because that's what you're here for. This movie is racist, and I like racism in movies. I don't like it in real life, because I don't think it's real or whatever, but I do love a little bit of racism in my movies. Just the same way, everyone has their kinks, right? Don't kink shame me, because my kink just happens to be racism. I don't see color, and I don't believe in racism stuff. Maybe it did exist a long time ago and stuff, back in them slave times. We don't have that anymore. So what I like to see in movies is called escapism. I like to go to the movies and feel like a racist vicariously through some of the characters and stuff. I like to see racist stuff. I like to feel hate in me. When I'm eating my popcorn stuff and nachos and things in the movies. Because I get to not be me for two hours. Okay? I love it. But ultimately, I don't hate this movie because of racism stuff. Even though I like, you know, I do like that it's in the movie. I hate this movie because it's not scary. I don't believe in religion or any of that stuff. But the one I 100% don't believe in, even more than not believing in normal stuff, is Indian voodoo crap. It's just not real. It's not scary. I don't believe in it. And it ruins this movie for me. So the movie starts out with this Pascal gets hit. He turns to this fucking ghost that's just completely worthless. He's supposed to be helping the doctor for trying to save his life. But how is he helping him? You call helping pointing out not to go to an Indian burial ground that he would have never knew existed in a million years? How's that helping? How about if you really wanted to help? Doc just moved to town. He could have pointed out where the best pizza buffet is in the town. Because every town has one. But some are worse than others. Like here in Biloxi. We got the best pizza buffet on the planet Earth. It's called Sicily's. They do a fabulous fucking service. Sicily's. And the best night to go is Friday. Because that's seafood night. They got seafood eggplant. Seafood lasagna. Crawfish etouffee. They got gumbo. They got it all. It's all for one price too. It's eleven ninety five. You can't beat that. As soon as I'm done with this piece of shit video. I'm going to Sicily's. It's in Diaverville. It's off Lemoyne. Check them out. He's a way less funny, boring, pointless, worthless ghost that's just a ripoff from that London werewolf movie thing that's way better than this in every way imaginable. So another thing I want to mention about this Pet Cemetery movie is that the smoking hot bitch from the Star Trek show, she's married to the doctor. Her dad hates her husband. And I've seen this. This is a classic thing you see in movies where the dad doesn't like the new son-in-law or brother-in-law whatever the fuck it is because they're a fuck up or an asshole or a drunk or something like that in this movie dr boring is literally a super successful smoking hot kind-hearted soft-spoken dreamboat 
right? I would probably fuck him if I could. For real. I mean, I don't know if I like dudes or whatever, but this guy definitely would fuck. I don't even have to think about it. So her bald, fat-ass loser Jew father hates him for no reason. Like, throughout the whole movie, they're even getting a, they even get in a fight at the funeral because he said, I knew it. I knew you'd be a loser. Whatever. Like, the fucking kid got hit by a truck because he didn't build a fence. That's true. But had her dad come to help find the house or something or put his Jew nose in the situation, maybe poke around a little bit, maybe help out and try to guide this young new family into familyhood like his bald old Jew ass is obviously 70 60 70 years old he's been there done that so it's both their fault right that they didn't build a fence because that's the whole this movie just needed a fence and that's it but the fact that he said he's always he knew he was bad from the beginning that doesn't make any sense there were no hints in this movie that the Dr. Boring is a bad guy on any sort of level he's perfect actually he's too good to be true so the writing's just bad maybe they should have had Doc take a pop every once in a while or had some kind of problem other than being perfect because all I can think about is that dude's dick in my mouth so we got Casper the worthless ghost we got Dr. Boring and Zelda's not scary who else we got we got Foghorn Leghorn Judd the neighbor who lives across the street who's just completely worthless in every way imaginable and my everyone's gonna get on to me and saying but you know this is a classic movie the characters are flawed no they're beyond flawed they're so laughably flawed that I can't take the movie seriously and once my mind switched off and I'm not taking the movie seriously anymore I just start eating harder and harder until I go into a blind fucking coma where my eyes shut and I shut down and I'm just sleeping in the theater because I can't take it anymore. Or my house. Because this Judd guy is laughable. Okay, this dude that looks like he's from the Munsters, he always says the wrong things. He he never tells the truth up front. It's not only is he a bad person, obviously, but he's a bad neighbor. And to me, that hits a lot harder. That's a lot worse. So it cuts to this flashback and this will really show how Judd's a piece of shit. In the movie, in the 30s or something, they someone buried this kid at the at the Indian burial ground, not the pet cemetery, which has nothing to do with this movie. They buried him at the Indian burial ground. And this guy comes back and he's a zombie now, right? And he goes, the zombie goes back into his old house and starts tearing stuff up. So Judd and his friends ride up on the house, and instead of pulling the zombie out of the house, these are his neighbors. The family lives in this house. A family lives in this house. The house was hand-built, cost a lot of money. It's the whole legacy. It's the whole life of this family. Instead of leaving that be and pulling the zombie out, they literally roll up on this house while the family's inside, and they burn it to the ground, and they burn everyone alive that's inside the house. And I just can't get over that. This is who you're taking advice from? Fucking retard who lives across the street and talks like a goddamn cartoon character? Why is this scary? It's not. It's, this is when you start suspending... Your belief systems, when you stretch out those beliefs to a system that's too stretched out, it breaks. And when stuff breaks, I can't take it seriously anymore. I just want to stuff my fucking face. So this movie's just fucking horrible. Mmm. Mmm. Is my hurricane fuel. You know what I mean? Dr. Boring, his cat gets killed by a truck. No big deal. Who gives a shit? Instead of just going to buy another one, he goes on a 20-mile hike with Psycho across the street. They bury the cat. It comes back, and it's scary. Who gives a shit, right? I don't know. Because you know what? Dr. Boring, he's not perfect. He does some fucking stupid... He makes some bad decisions, too. Like, watch this. Check out how Dr. Boring dresses while he's doing yard work in his yard. Look at this. He looks like he's dressed to go to a Wings TV show convention. Doesn't make any sense. No one does yard work dressed like this. So Dr. Doctor Beautiful's not perfect. No one listened to me. No one listened to reason. No one built a fence. And the poor little adorable Gage, the Dr. Boring son, gets hit by a truck. It's supposed to be sad or something, but it's his fault, right? He didn't listen to his dad. The dad's fault. He didn't build a fence. It's the wife's dad's fault. He didn't help him build a fence. It's all these people's fault. You know what I mean? It's like I'm watching Fargo or something. It doesn't make sense. I don't care about people making bad decisions. I like horror stuff. You know, and trucks running over children is not horror to me. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But it's not scary. The most impressive thing in this whole movie, for real, is right before Gage gets killed, they're having like a picnic, and it looks very impressive. They got a Boston cream pie. They got sweet tea, they got fried chicken, corn on the cob, watermelon. Absolutely amazing spread. They're having a great time. It's the little kid's fault for running away, not listening to his dad. That's why he died. But I do know one thing, right? If a little kid that size got hit by a Mack truck, there would be nothing left of him. He shows up later after they bury him in the burial ground. He comes back from the dead, and he's exactly the same. He's got a little stitch on his forehead. The fact that he's just a whole little kid doesn't make any sense. It's not scary. He should have came back as like a pile of guts that's chasing them around and stuff. But what do I know? I'm not some forensic Scientologist thing. I just, I know what I know. 
But then when we get to the end of the movie, this is where it gets really insulting for me. And even me, who likes horrible, stupid shit that doesn't make sense and stuff like that sometimes, even this is the straw that broke the camel's jew because it's so dumb that I can't believe it. Excuse me, I didn't have dinner, so I'm starving. So at the end of this movie, the little kid comes back. Now he's a zombie or whatever. But my problem is now he's got hu superhuman strength, which I don't know if in the zombie, if there's any zombie movie where you come back with superhuman strength. I'm pretty sure there's not because it's stupid. Like zombie stuff is very scientific. Zombies are just reanimated corpses, right? So whatever your max strength level was when you died, that's your max strength level when you come back. Basic, just science stuff. But this little kid, Gage, he comes back and he has superhuman strength and it's just, I can't believe it. I can suspend my disbelief enough to see some zombies and stuff in movies and not get mad. But when they do superhuman strength stuff, I can't take it anymore. And it's it's kind of sad for me because this whole ending where Gage comes back and fights the doctor in the in the house is my favorite part of the whole movie because half the time it's a doll. And you know I love killer doll stuff. And it's obviously a doll. It's not a little boy. And this doll, this little doll really fucks him up hard. And I appreciated all that stuff. But once the wife comes home and he kills her and then he hoists her body up into the attic and then drops her on a noose, it's just, that's not possible. I mean, it would be hard enough for a, a full-grown man to do that, let alone a little dead zombie kid. So this movie's fucking stupid. You know, and then when the doc shows up, the kid flies down like Superman, beats the shit out of him, knocks the doctor's syringe out of his hand. It's just, this is not possible. So he burns the little kid alive, and then he sets the house on fire. I don't understand why in these movies they think the, the solution to their problems is to burn the house. There's nothing wrong with the house. The house was fine. It's just the people are retarded that live in it. Probably shouldn't bury them in voodoo Indian burial grounds. That's the problem. Why, why is everyone burning houses down? Things are expensive and they take a long time. So it kind of triggered me a little bit because I've been through that with the house burning down and stuff. But the, the big difference is when our house burned down, the fire department showed up immediately because we live in the real world, not in Stephen King fantasy land. Fire department, police department, neighbors, all kinds of all kinds of sorts of things. Because people might not know this, but I'll just spoiler alert. Fires are really big and hot. You can see them from miles and miles away. So in this town, whatever the fuck it is, their house burns down. No one ever comes. There's no fire department, no police. It just stays on fire. And they even have shots of like trucks driving by while the house is still on fire. Someone shows up because probably because this movie's a cheap piece of shit and they didn't want to like pay actors to show up as fire departments or whatever so so dr boring just burns the house down and just sits on the floor and plays cards waiting for his dead wife to come back that's really the end of this movie for real and when his disgusting rotting corpse wife who used to be hot you know i used to when i was a little kid when i was 13 or 14 i, I used to jerk off to her on those star trek shows which i fucking hate it's it's one of those sacrifice things you know i'd have to stomach through some horrible horrible nerd shit floating in a spaceship through space thing sort of show just to get to my scenes where the hot bitch is from the pet cemetery movie and jerk off to her tits and stuff but I got over all that. That was a sacrifice thing. His ex-hot wife shows up as a zombie and they start making out. And I start, and I was thinking the whole time, as soon as they started making out and the ooze was coming out of her face, I was thinking I got these feelings in my stomach and down in my no-no place area thing where very familiar feelings. And it wasn't good feelings. It was bad. Bad. And this is how it reminded me of like, the reason I think I like women and stuff is because they're pretty and I like their boobs. You know, basically that's it. But I don't like talking to them. I don't like, I don't like anything else about them. Other other than the prettiness in their boobs. I hate everything else about women. But I still think I'm not gay because I like boobs and stuff and how hot women are and things. But at the same time, I can't I can't keep denying myself these feelings I got in me. Because when I think about women, I think about this ending where he's making out with the wife and she's all gross and stuff. Because that's what, in my mind, that's what I honestly think it would be like to make out with a girl and kiss her and stuff. It'd be all gross and weird and m make me not feel good. And I got these feelings I've been holding and burying deep down inside me that are the opposite of that for dudes. Specifically dudes that look like, like Hugh Jackman or how Russell Crowe used to look before he, before he turned into me. Because Russell Crowe in his prime... It's just nothing Nothing gets me harder than that. Thinking about Russell Crowe and Hugh Jackman naked, top of me, 
and below me making like a fat boy sandwich gets me thinking about them good feelings in my no-no places in my heart and my soul and stuff and i've just been denying that i think i don't know if i carry it out and actually do it or whatever but i do know that the idea of women is a good thing it makes me think i'm not gay but the idea of touching one or kissing one it just makes me want to vomit just like looking at this bitch make out with her husband at the end of the pet cemetery thing and then maybe i learned something from all this that dr boring is makes me feel good on my insides and my no-nos and maybe one good thing did come out of this pet cemetery thing because i'm starting to think i like dudes makes my no-nos feel good and that's all that life's about anyway it's about feeling them no-nos and you know, maybe I want Poon Annie. I don't know yet. We don't know. But what I do know is that this movie's fucking horrible. So that's it. What'd you guys think of the Pet Cemetery movie? Have you seen it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Am I wrong? Tell me in the comments. You know, I don't care what you think. I'm not going to read them. But my little fat kid down the street will. And he'll pretend to be me. And you won't know the difference. So don't bitch about it in the comments. Because he has to listen to you, your shit, and relay that to me. And I don't want any of that. So just pretend it's me. Just pretend it's me. Just... Pull your dick out, put your hand down there, use your left hand to comment and pretend it's me and just stroke off. Nobody cares and no one will know the difference anyway.